come on, you can do better than that. Give Jesus a big hand. I'm telling you what, I hope we never, ever, ever take for granted uh, what God is doing in our midst at Christian Faith Center. It is rare, it is special, and Jesus is surely building his church. He really is. And uh, man, nothing gets me going like, man, just testimonies from the tank and uh, just change lives, change lives. You know, the power of a changed life is absolutely amazing. Our God is alive. He is still in the saving business, the restoring business. Come on, the calling business. He is building his church. It's absolutely amazing. I'm gonna take a risk here. I usually do not do this if I don't know for sure he's in the room, but I heard a rumor that one of my dear friends, David Johnson, is in the room right now. Come on, David, put your hand up. You might not know David Johnson, but David should not be here, but God's hand was on him. He is an absolute miracle. And, uh, and a dear brother, we love you so much, man. And we're so thankful that you're here. It is a, a miracle that you are here right now. And if I didn't have to go to work right now, I'd come down there and give you a big hug, but I gotta work. Love you though, I'm coming for you right after service. Ephesians chapter four, grab your Bibles. And Ephesians chapter four, I'm gonna be concluding a series we've been in called All the Feels. All the feels. I want to thank all of you who are joining us online from the online family right now. Friends, can we put our hands together for our online family? We love you. Praying God blesses you in a powerful way. And uh, we love what the Lord's doing. Matter of fact, we had a lady fly in from Washington that's a part of our online church family. She flew in from Washington and got baptized in the first service. Come on. I don't know. I hope we gave her like a Panera gift card or something for longest, uh, longest travel, but we're just excited about what the Lord's doing. Ephesians chapter four, um, we're going to read verses 14 through 15 to start. And I've got a word in my heart today that's going to help you. This is critical, mission critical, that you get this revelation in your heart as a follower of Jesus, um, because this is something that we need to learn, need to have if we're going to walk in everything God has for us. And again, this will be the last message in this series next week. I'm beginning a brand new series of messages called Made for Monday. Everybody say, I'm made for Monday. All right, you need to bring three or four people with you to church. We'll find a place to sit, okay? We'll find a place to park, but get somebody here. This is gonna be one of the most empowering messages in our, our series, and I'm praying that God would stir our hearts to be the impact uh, in the Treasure Valley that he's calling us to be. You do not wanna miss it. Ephesians chapter four. Starting in verse 14, let's read together. Then we will no longer be immature like children, and we won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love. How many know both of those together are important? Okay, truth without love is grouchy and mean. Love without truth doesn't get us anywhere, but we'll speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, which is the goal, amen, who is the head of his body, the church. I want to preach to you a message today called, that's not me. That's not me. Pray with me if you would. Father, we love you so much. And I thank you right now for every single person, every heart. God, I pray that you would prepare our hearts, God, for what you want to do. I thank you for the word of the Lord that's mighty and powerful. I thank you that you've ordained this moment to help people, to shift people, to lift people, to help them become everything you've created them to be. Thank you for what you're doing here now, and I pray your word would produce incredible things in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I, I want to give you, um, I, I want to give you, maybe this is the love. I mean, I've given a lot of truth in this last series. I want to give us a little love. Come on. How many can use a little love? Yeah. All right. I, I, want to, I want to give us something up top that I think is really important for us to get because obviously we've been unpacking this idea of feelings and we do not want to be people that are led by our feelings. We want to be led by God's spirit. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says the sons and daughters of God, they are led by the spirit of God. God's spirit leads our spirit, okay? So we want to be spirit-led people, not feelings-led people. And yet at the same time, our feelings are not bad. As a matter of fact, I want you to write this down. 
Feelings are a gift. They are a gift. Let's not forget that. It's a good reminder as we come to the end of this series that in no way do I want to shed a bad light on our feelings. I want to shed an appropriate light on our feelings. I want to shed an appropriate light on them. Because could you imagine living in a world with no feelings? Where it wasn't all the feels, it was none of the feels. None. I mean, in some way, it might be okay because we'd have no fear, we'd have no hurt, we'd have no embarrassment. You think it might be perfect, but it would not. We'd be a bunch of stoic robots with no emotion and no capacity for things like happiness, laughter, smiles. Not only that, but you know, we live in a fallen world. God created things to be good, but how many know there's sin in this world? And the world has got some struggles, some issues in it. But the reality is this, we have not only good feelings, we have bad feelings. And feelings are the warning system of our bodies. How many know if, you've only, if you touch a hot stove, you're only gonna touch it once? Right, now that's a bad feeling, right? But it, it works for our good. How many know even things that, that feel bad can produce a good result in our life? God uses our feelings, even, even the things that hurt in this life. God wants to redeem those and use those things to help you in your everyday life. Even what hurts in our feelings can be used for good. God made us to have feelings, right? Some of them good, some of them bad, but all of them are trying to tell us something. And so what do we do with them? We need to recognize that having feelings is not bad. Some of us need to feel a little bit more. Come on. We need, if you're in a good mood, let your face know it. Amen. Yeah. If you're enjoying life, let, let your face show it. It's what we do with our emotions that matters the most. When the gifts that God gives us function within their proper boundaries, they produce life and they produce blessing. But when they function outside of the boundaries and they run wayward, that's when they will bring the opposite to us. They will not bring the good God intended. They will actually bring bad to our life. Now, a lot of, here's a very common thing today. People do, do stuff and here's what they say. Well, I felt like it. I felt like it. Yeah. Listen, feelings are a gift, but they can become a curse. Amen. They really can. We, listen, we don't want to do everything we feel. We don't want to say everything we feel. How many are raising kids right now? Come on. Come on. Let me just flash back to early childhood development. I've got two young boys, and my house is the octagon 24-7. I thought they'd be like best friends. They, are, they have tried to kill each other since the moment the second one was born. If I turn my back for five minutes, there's a backflip happening off my couch, full suplex on the other one. You know, it's... They're, tr they're, trying to, they're trying to prod each other, you know, battle with each other, wrestle each other, shoot each other. We got dart guns, we got, we got Nerf guns, now we have new round Nerf guns. Now we have, they're like the new paintball gun, they're like little BBs, they're shooting each other with that. I came outside yesterday, they both had full face masks on and they were shooting each other with these little plastic BB guns. But here's the, here's, here's the, yeah, you need to pray for the Hodges boys. They turned out way too much like their dad. They would have got a little more mama in there. But here's the thing. Every time something happens, it was like, well, he made me feel bad. Well, I, I felt like it. I felt like it is not a reason to act. You're going to have a lot of feelings, but wisdom does not release everything we feel. Matter of fact, let me give you a scripture. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. This is out of the message paraphrase, but I do like this. It says, a sound mind makes for a robust body, but runaway emotions corrode the bones. Runaway emotions corrode the bones. How many know? Too many emotions. Doing too much of how we feel. We don't want to say everything we feel like saying, and we don't want to do everything we feel like saying. Or doing. Let me give you some context. What is the scripture telling us? It's telling us that we should not do everything we feel like doing. We should not say everything we feel like saying. But how many know we live in a world where you can say whatever you want? We got Insta. I mean, you can post whatever, you, you can TikTok whatever, you can Instagram whatever. For the more mature among us, you can Facebook whatever. Come on. 
But how many know it's a different day because you can say whatever you, whatever you feel with almost no consequence. You'll, stay, you'll say stuff online you would never say to another human being. I forget who quoted it. I want to say it was Mike Tyson, but Mike Tyson was quoted saying something like, um, the reason nobody used to talk like they do now is because back in the day, if you talked like that, you'd have to get punched in the face. <laughs> there, there were some real consequences, you know, to, to what we did. But now we can, we can vent what we feel with what feels like no consequence instead of to a small group, we're venting it sometimes to hundreds of people. But see, it's important to understand that just because we feel it doesn't mean we have to do it. Matter of fact, I wanna give you a revelation that's so important and if you'd write this down, I think it would be good for you because you need to understand that feelings are of the flesh. Feelings are of the flesh. Now it's a Bible word, but I'm pulling it right out of the scripture. Okay, it means natural. They are part of the natural part of who you are. Feelings are, they're not bad, but they are flesh. They're natural. And Romans chapter eight, verse five through eight in the New King James reads this way. It says, for those who live according to the, there's that word, flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded, Naturally minded, that's all it's saying there. To be natural minded leads to death. But to be spiritually minded is life and it's peace. Because the carnal mind, the natural mind, the flesh mind is an enemy against God. For it is not subject, it's not submitted to God's law. It wants to post everything. It wants to say everything. It wants to shoot its little brother with the BB gun. Yeah. It's not subject to God's law, nor indeed can it be. Listen to this. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now here's what I need you to get. Because you are not a one-dimensional being. You were created in the image of your father. And our God is a triune God. He is Father, He is Son, come on church, He is Holy Spirit. Okay, you are not one dimensional. You're created in the image of God. You have a body, you have a soul, and you are a spirit. You have a body, you have a soul, and you are a spirit. You are, you are tri-dimensional. There are multiple facets to who you are. Now here's what I need you to get. Every part of who you are has a sense. Every part of who you are has senses. Matter of fact, we're gonna put this on the screen and I want you to get this today. Because feelings are the voice of your body. They are the natural part of you, okay? Reason is the voice of your soul. That's your mind, will, and your emotions. Okay, it's, it's reason is the voice of the soul, but conscience is the voice of the spirit. Every part of you, every dimension of you has a voice. It has a sense, okay? It's talking. It's trying to lead. We can be led by our feelings, by the voice of our, we can be led by the natural, the flesh part of us. That's called feelings. We can be led by reason. We can also be led by the Spirit. And we want to be led by the Spirit of God. Can I get an amen? amen? So here's what I want you to see. You cannot be in the Spirit and in your feelings at the same time. To be in your feelings means to be led by the natural part of who we are. Our body, our soul, and our spirit have senses and feelings are the voice of the natural part of us. Proverbs 29, um, Proverbs 29, 11 talks about this. Proverbs 29, 11 is powerful. So it's, a, it's one of those kind of uh, scriptures, but I'm gonna read it to you, you ready? Proverbs 29, 11, a fool vents all of his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. A fool vents all of his feelings, but a wise man holds him back. So here's what I'm trying to get. My friends, we want to be people that are led by the Spirit of God. We want to be Spirit-led people. And if we allow our feelings to get in the driver's seat, 
We are allowing the natural part of who we are to lead our lives, to influence our decisions. And I don't know about you, but anytime I let my flesh lead, it usually gets me into trouble. It usually gets me into trouble. We want to be people that allow God's spirit to lead our spirit. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us we should let our emotions get out front and we should get in our feelings and let our feelings drive. As a matter of fact, the Bible constantly tells us the opposite. The Bible says the natural part, we are to let our spirit lead forward. And the natural part of us, we want to do our best to diminish the natural part, knowing that the spiritual part of our life should be leading. Matter of fact, the Bible says things like this. The Bible says things like crucify your flesh, the natural part of who we are. Now, now that's not, that's not supposed to be some weird masochistic, you know, thing. What is it saying? It's saying that no good is going to come from you letting your emotions rage. No good is going to come from you letting the pride come and the ego come and the natural part of us rise up and lead the way forward. No good is going to come from that. But how many know great blessing, great increase, great opportunity and open doors come when we allow God's spirit to lead our spirit and our spirit leads the way forward and we make spiritual decisions, wise decisions, decisions saturated in God's forward moving plan for our life. I don't want to be a natural person that's led by the natural. Come on, I want to be a spiritual person that's led by God's spirit and sees everything God has for my life come to pass. And that's what I want for you. We don't want to be led by the natural. We want to be led by the spiritual. And in order to do that, we need to know where what we feel comes from. What we feel comes from the natural part of who we are. Now, we don't want to ignore our feelings and stuff them. But at the same time, we don't want to let our emotions define us and control us. We don't want to let what we feel determine who we are and where we go. But we don't want to stuff them either. It's, it's, it's healthy to process what you feel through the right lens. Amen. We want to process things through the right lens. And I, I need you to get this. I want you to write it down. This is so important. Because our feelings, they are for indication and not for identification. Okay, feelings are, they indicate something in our life. They do not determine who we are. They are for indication, not for identification. Let me say it this way. Feelings tell us something. They do not make us something. They tell us something. They do not make us something. They are an indication of how you are, not an indication of who you are. They tell you how you are doing, not who you are becoming. Feelings indicate they do not identify. Let me give you some examples. If you are feeling anxious, that's not an identity. It is an indication that something needs to be addressed. Anxiety is not just something that drops out of the heavens and attacks us. It is the fruit of something. It is the result of something. Anxiety is telling us we either have too much going on in our soul or too much going on in our life. It's your body's indicator light that says something is not right. There's been a trauma in your soul. There's been a a, a, a something that's come or you've got so much going on in your life that your body is going warning, warning, warning. It's indicating that an adjustment needs to be made. Now, instead of making an adjustment, what a lot of us do is we take on that feeling as an identity. And instead of saying, I'm dealing with this, we say, I am this. I'm an anxious person. I have an anxious mind. I I am an anxiety-ridden individual and will treat the symptom instead of addressing the symptom. Listen, if you feel depressed, that's not an identity. It is an indication that something needs to be adjusted in your life. What's depression? It's in the name. It's saying that something is pushing down upon your life. 
It's burdening you. It's weighing you down. It's you are laden with something that your soul is not capable of carrying. So it has pressed you. It has pushed you. It has minimized you and you're carrying this thing. It's important that we, that needs to be affirmed. If you're feeling depression, you need to acknowledge that, but we cannot wear that as an identity. Come on, somebody. We can't, it's an indication, not an identification. If you feel worthless, listen, that's not your identity. That's something that you need to address. Because my Bible says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made and that heaven paid a price for us we will never in this lifetime understand. So if you feel that way, acknowledge it, but you cannot wear that as an identity. If you feel confused, that's not an identity. It is an indication that something needs clarified for you. Now, I, I want to speak to something that, for whatever reason, is very controversial in the day and age we live in. But we are living in a day where we have believed this lie. And the lie is this. If I feel a way, I must be a way. This is the root and the foundation of much of the things we are dealing with out in our world today. This is the root and the foundation of the entire trans community's argument right now. That you don't know how I feel and I feel like I'm this way. So I am. The premise of that whole argument is I feel this way, so I must be this way. Now, I'm not expecting to get a bunch of claps, but we need to understand the lie at the root of this is a lie regarding identity, that I am defined not by who God says I am, not by who God's word says I am, not by who my parents say I am, not by who biology says I am. I am defined by what I feel. And if that changes tomorrow, then I'll be that tomorrow. And if it changes back the next day, I'll be that the next day. Whatever I feel, I must be. That's not true. You are not what you feel. You are who God says you are. And listen, we don't just do this in those communities. There's a subtle way that this happens in all kinds of places in our lives. How often do we wear what we're feeling as an identity, right? Let me prove it to you. When we're going through hard stuff, what do we say? I'm depressed. I'm anxious. I'm worthless. I'm confused. I'm struggling. Now listen, it seems like a small thing. And if you're saying those things, I'm glad that you're at least acknowledging you're dealing with something, but can I give you some better language? Because the reality is, is your confession matters and you actually are not your struggle. You actually are not what you're going through. You're bigger than that. Your purpose is greater than that. And if you feel a way today, that doesn't mean that you are that. It just means that you feel that. And so we have to acknowledge those things. Let me give you better language. Say something like this. I feel depressed. I feel discouraged. I'm feeling worthless. I'm feeling confused. I'm feeling unheard. I'm feeling depressed. Because it's at least acknowledging the actual source of it and it's putting what you feel in the right category. What you feel is real, it's natural, but it doesn't mean that it's the ultimate truth for your life. You might be weary, that doesn't mean you're going to be weary forever. You might be depressed, that doesn't mean you're going to be depressed forever. You might be confused, that doesn't mean you're going to be confused forever. You might feel unworthy, that doesn't mean you are unworthy. It doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It just means you feel that way. We've got to acknowledge that what we feel is separate from who we are. Right? We can't get our identity from our feelings. Feelings change. They, they're here today and they come tomorrow. 
You might feel this way. Matter of fact, I just want to prophesy into your life right now. What you are going through in your life is not your final destination. The battle you are fighting is not going to be the battle you stay in. The struggle you're dealing with right now will not, in Jesus' name, be the struggle that takes you out. In in God, in Christ, we are a new creation. My identity comes from him and him alone. He alone authors my days. What I went through doesn't determine my value. Only God can do that for me. In God, you go higher and higher. In God, you go from glory to glory. In God, your destiny is exceedingly abundantly beyond anything you could think or imagine. That is who you are. And I love God because he's a seasons God. Times, listen, winter doesn't last forever. Inevitably, it breaks into spring. Fall does not last forever. Inevitably, the leaves fall, the snow comes, and the seasons change. And can I just tell you, you might be feeling a certain way today, but in Jesus' name, you're going to be a different way tomorrow. Your feelings are not your final destination. Some of you need to get home. You need to look in the mirror and you need to just scream this out. That's not me. You might feel worthless. You might feel lonely. You might feel like nobody sees you. Nobody loves you. But you need to rise up in the power of God. Look yourself in the mirror and say, that's not me. Come on, say it with me. That's not me. Just because you feel it doesn't mean you are it. Your feelings do not define you. God does. God does. Matter of fact, I want you to write this down. It's a powerful truth. Feelings will tell you what you feel, but not always what is real. Let me just hit you with some of that Dr. Seuss today. Good Lord. How did I ever land on that? Feelings will tell you what you feel, but not always what is real. And that is is the lie. That is the great lie of this generation, that if you feel it, you are it. If you feel like there's nothing left for you, that must be true. If you feel like nobody loves you, that must be true. If you feel something, you must be something. But my friends, you are not what you feel. It is telling you how you are, not who you are. My final thing I wanna get into your heart is this. Feelings are always subject to the owner's manual. Feelings are always subject to the owner's manual. Matter of fact, let me give you a great story. I bought a Subaru years ago. And um, I remember, you know that new car feel when you like get onto the highway and you start driving your car home, like first time, you're gonna pull it into the garage for the first time. It's got the new car smell. And it's all, just all the good stuff. I had test driven, you know, the car around town or whatever, and everything was great, was loving it. And I got on the highway, because I bought the car in Meridian, I was getting back on the highway to connect back into Nampa. And this car started absolutely losing it. Like the steering wheel would just whap, just jerk to the right. And then that steering wheel would jerk to the left. And just, I mean, I was all over the place. And I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I nearly had a panic attack. Like number one, I'm like, my brand new car. I wish safety was even like my number one concern. It wasn't, okay? All the guys in here will understand. All right, you're like, no! I got ripped off! And, uh, and so, I mean, this car starts going crazy. And I, I immediately convinced myself, I convinced myself, this is what I thought. Because I'm thinking of all this, I'm like, okay, there's a major issue with something in the steering or whatever. But here's what hit my mind. This, the, the, the tire, the lugs are not tight on the tire. That's the only thing that could be causing this, I mean, major, back. I'm like, this tire is going straight and then it just wobbles one way or the other. And I thought, I got to get off the highway. I, I got to, I, let me, I, I just make it to the first exit, pulled off. I'm checking all the lugs. I'm looking at her. Nothing's wrong. Nothing seems disconnected. Things brand new. All the tires are tight. And I'm thinking, what in the world? Like, this is the craziest thing. And I'm panicking. And so I Google it and the owner's manual pops up. And in the manual, it starts talking about something. So I grabbed the book out of my, out of my glove compartment, my handy dandy, you know, Subaru owner's manual here. And the owner's manual starts to tell me 
about what is actually not a problem, it is actually a feature. And it is called lane assist. Now you laugh, but this was brand new. I didn't even know that I had it. And I am convinced my tire is gonna fly off. And instead, now I'm faced with the reality, I don't have a problem, I have a feature. And apparently, I don't know how to stay in the lines. And I'm looking through this thing, and as I was studying for this week, I had this epiphany, I had this epiphany. It really didn't matter how I felt. What mattered, what mattered was what the owner, the designer, the engineer intended for that to be. I 100% thought, I felt like I was going to die. The reality is I had never been safer. I probably had never been a better driver. I had never stayed in the lines better than I was in the lines. Apparently I was just terrible driver, okay? And here's, but here's the thing, I could, I could feel, I could feel like putting oil in the radiator. I could feel like that was a good idea, would not produce a good result. I, I could pull up at the pump and I could feel like putting diesel in a gas car. How many know that's not gonna produce a good result? Because what you feel does not always tell you what is true. Your feelings must become subject to the intent of that who created that piece of machinery. And I want you to know something that as Christians, we also have an owner's manual. It's called the word of God. And this word tells us the ultimate truth. It doesn't matter if I feel different than what this says. I can't let my feelings be greater than God's word. If I feel like something is, is different than what this says, I have a choice to make. I need to either honor the owner's manual or I'm gonna elevate my feelings and let my feelings lead. And see, so here's the reality. Many of us have allowed what we feel to identify us in this life. You feel alone, unwanted, isolated, outcast, confused, but I can't find a single time in the Bible that it tells us to listen to whatever we feel and just go after that. No, God's word does not become subject to my feelings. My feelings become subject to God's word. Even Jesus, he prayed this prayer in John 17, 17. He said, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. How many know the creator, the owner, the engineer, the architect of all things? He has given us his word and his word is the final authority in our life regarding who we are and what we mean to him and what we mean to this world. And can I just tell you for just, can I take just a minute? And can I tell you what the owner's manual says about your life? And I wanna give you an opportunity to make a decision today. You can continue to trust what you feel and let that be an identity, or you can today allow the owner's manual to speak identity over your life. And here's what the owner's manual says. The owner's manual says you are accepted. It says you are chosen. It says you are free. It says you are forgiven. It says you are a brand new person in Christ. It says you are a child of God. It says you are made in God's image. It says you belong to Jesus. It says you've been offered a new life. It says you're a citizen of heaven. It says you're protected by God. It says you're a part of something important. It says you are loved no matter what. It says you are not alone. It says you are God's special creation. It says you are precious to God. It says you are rescued. It says you are purposed. It says you are heard. It says you are strengthened. It says that you're an heir of God. It says you're a part of God's family. It says you are saved. It says you are the temple of God. It says you are cared for. It says you're filled with true joy. It says you're blessed. It says you're understood. It says you're treasured by God. It says you're complete in Jesus Christ. And that's just the beginning of what the manual says about you. So listen to me, friends, listen to me. When your feelings try to rise up and tell you who you are, you now have a new weapon to use against them. It's a word from the Lord and you need to just scream this out. That's not me. When your feelings make you feel unwanted, that's not 
me. I am wanted. I am chosen. I am a royal priesthood. We are part of a holy nation. I'm God's child. When, when you look in the mirror and it feels over, you need to say, that's not me. You need to recognize your feelings do not dictate who you are. Only God gets to do that. And if you'll take what God says and make that the highest truth, I'm telling you, your feelings will follow. Your feelings will follow. I want you to stand up on your feet all across this room. And I want to declare this over you today. I believe with all my heart, God gave me this word for those of you that are here today, those of us joining the online family right now. I need you to hear this. Whatever you feel, that's not you. It's how you are. It is not who you are. It's how you're doing. It's not who you're becoming. You are who God says you are. You are who God's created you to be. And if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. And according to the owner's manual, exceedingly, abundantly, beyond anything you could think or imagine is in store for your life in Jesus Christ. I wanna pray for you today. And listen, if you're here today, our prayer team is gonna come and get ready to be available. If you're here today and you need to pray with someone, prayer team can move right now. Um, if you're here today and you need prayer, we wanna partner with you in prayer. I don't know where the prayer team is. Staff, if you could come forward, just get ready. Pray for people as they come forward. Our team is gonna pray for you. They wanna to minister to you. But listen, if you're here today and you don't even know Christ in a personal way, I want you to know that you can know Christ. Not only that, but you can be saved. You can be set free. You can experience a brand new life in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. That's the promise of God. The gospel is simple, but it's powerful. You do not be good your way into heaven. You believe your way into heaven. You trust in what Jesus did for you because you could never do enough. But Jesus did enough for you. And it's through faith in him and him alone we are forgiven. We are made part of the family of God. And we become a new creation. The Holy Spirit of God comes and lives in our life. Helps us become everything that we were made to be. Listen, some of you today, you need to give your whole life to Jesus. You need to believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead. You need to confess with your mouth that he is Lord of your life. And you need to receive the salvation that comes from Jesus and Jesus alone. Some of you are here today and listen, you've let what you feel become an identity for you. You've, you've let what somebody spoke over your life frame and outwork your entire life. I'm telling you what they said cannot be greater than what God said. His voice must be the final voice. His word is the final word. And according to my Bible and your Bible and every other Bible that's actually a Bible, you are great in the eyes of God. And you are loved by God beyond anything you could imagine. And so listen, if you're here today and you either need to give your life to Christ and make that confession, or you need to receive the owner's manual word for your life and let something be bigger than what you're currently living in, I wanna pray for you. I'm gonna to count to three, and on the count of three, however you need to respond, this is your moment. Are you ready for this? One, two, three. I want you to raise your hands all over the room if you just say, Pastor, pray for me. That's me, I need, I need a new identity. I need, I, need, I need to hear and know that I'm not what I feel. I can't live in where I am. Maybe you need to give your life to Jesus today. You need to make him Lord of every part of your life. I wanna pray for you. Father, right now in Jesus' name, God, I thank you that your word is the final word. God, I thank you that what you say, you have the final say. And Lord, I just speak identity over your people today, that they are loved, that they are saved, that they are accepted in you. Father, if they need to trust in you today, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you in a personal way, I pray, God, that as they believe in their heart, I pray even now that they would confess with their mouth. You just need to say, say, Christ, I believe in you. Forgive me. Wash me. 
Make me clean. Make me part of the family of God. Give me a new life, a new heart, and a new start. Just confess with your mouth that he's Lord, that he's Lord of your life, that you believe in him. And ask him to give you such a great salvation today, to forgive your sin and give you a brand new heart. Father, for every person here that's lived under a false identity, I pray they would leave living in who you've created them to be. And that, Lord, with all of our hearts, we would combat the lies of the enemy. And we would look him square in his face and say, that's not me. I am who you say I am. In Jesus' name. Oh, come on, lift up your voice. Lift up a shout. Give God a praise. Come on, if you're thankful, sing this out one last time. Come on, it's in him.